John 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Uh, without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, but and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. John 1, 1 to 18. There are some Bible students who say that when the Apostle John wrote the Gospel of John, he must have had the book of Genesis with him. First, let's look at the beginning of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Uh, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John 1, 1 to 5. John introduces us to a speaking God who creates the world. God speaks through the word. This word is in existence with God at the beginning of creation. In fact, it is through this word that God creates all things. Not only does this word create all things, but this word also shines God's light into the darkness of creation. In him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John 1, 4-5. Now, let's look at the beginning of the first book of the Bible, Genesis. It also starts with these words, in the beginning. In the beginning, God creates, uh, sorry, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Genesis 1, 1 to 3. Both Genesis 1 and John 1 start with these words. In the beginning. Then both Genesis 1 and John 1 explains, explain God's creation process. God creates by speaking. Uh, John 1 calls this creative speech of God the Word. Both Genesis 1 and John 1 tell us that God creates in a process, from chaos to order, from darkness to light. Genesis 1, 2 to 3. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Genesis 1, 2 to 3. At creation, the earth is formless and empty, and darkness covers the, the surface of the deep. Um, the first act of creation by God is to speak into this darkness and create the light. 
In John 1, God also speaks into the darkness of the lives of people through the Word. Um, in Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word Jesus now brings God light. Jesus brings life, and that life is the light of all people. Jesus brings life and shines his light into our darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. The original Greek word that is translated as overcome can also be translated as understand or comprehend. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness does not understand or comprehend it. Uh, this darkness not only fails to understand or comprehend the light of the word, this darkness rejects the light of the word. This darkness tries to overcome this light. Today is Third Advent Sunday. We celebrate that the Son of God has arrived. Last week, we read of John the Baptist who has come to prepare the way for the Lord. The Apostle John also refers to John the Baptist. John also comes to witness to the light that Jesus brings. John 1, 6-8. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The contrast between darkness and light is one contrast that we are reminded of during the Advent season. Uh, there is also a contrast of darkness and light uh, in the creation story, as we have read. Right now, we have friends and family who might be experiencing this darkness and chaos in their lives. We too might be experiencing this darkness and chaos. We look at the world, uh, we can see some darkness and chaos. There is a war in the Ukraine, there is a war in the Middle East. There are many places in the world that, is, that are experiencing hardship. There is famine and hunger, we are all recovering from a pandemic. Jennifer lives in West Virginia. Uh, she shares her struggle with an illness. Several months after my college graduation, a few lumps formed in my neck. I had been sick and assumed my illness had caused my lymph nodes to swell, which is fairly common. But one day I woke up with a 102 degree fever and my dad took me to the hospital. After days of waiting and praying, I received a cancer diagnosis at age 24. My faith was shaken. I felt shrouded in darkness. Even though my heart wasn't in it, I went to church each Sunday, knelt at the altar, and cried out to God. The more I listened to sermons, attended Bible studies, and participated in prayer groups, the more I felt God's presence and found meaning in God's words. It is easy to trust God when everything is going well, but when something terrible happens, it is easier to turn our backs on God. Often when we experience grief and pain, we get lost in the struggle and cannot see God's guiding light. We may even fall away from our walk with God. But sometimes it is in those dark times that we can see more clearly the light of God shining through. Advent is a time for, for us to remember that we need to receive this light from Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Apostle John reminds us to be ever willing to receive this light from Jesus. In so doing, we are transformed to become the children of God. Remember, the Son of God transformed us to become daughters and sons of God. John 1, 12 to 13. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Apostle John takes time to introduce us to the Word. John 1 tells us that this Word existed 
with God at the beginning of creation, and this word helped God in the creation process. If you read further into the Old Testament, in the first part of the Bible, that is, you will find out that God creates the first man and the first woman, but they disobey God in the first garden. Human beings then experience spiritual darkness and chaos. Then God decides to do something about this spiritual darkness and chaos. God begins with the story of Abraham, which leads to the story of Israel, the people of God in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, God decides to make the final revelation of himself to creation. The word who existed with God at the beginning now takes on human flesh and is born as a baby in a stable in Bethlehem. It is this story of Christmas that starts off the New Testament, the second part of the Bible. John 1 verse 14, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. In the original Greek, you can also read that uh, the word takes on human flesh and pitches his tent among us. Uh, the word of God becomes a human being and makes a temporary stay with us. John the Apostle tells us that when we see the glory of this word, Jesus Christ, we see the glory of the one and only Son who comes from the Father in heaven. Christmas, therefore, is God's act of re-creation. The word that existed with God at the beginning now takes on human flesh. God continues his creative process by sending his son into the world to bring God's light to all of us who live in darkness. Our tendency is to reject God's son. Yet, when we receive God's son, Jesus, we receive God's light. And when we receive Jesus, God continues his act of recreation in our hearts. God's light transforms us. What is God's light? The Apostle John then explains, Jesus Christ is the one who has come to reveal the grace and truth from God. John 1, 17 to 18. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, is in closest relationship with God, has made him known. John 1, 17 to 18. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God's final revelation of himself to us. Jesus Christ is God who pitched his tent to live among us. Jesus Christ is God's final revelation of grace and truth to us. Jesus Christ comes from the very heart of God in heaven to reveal the very heart of God to us on earth. Jesus Christ has come to shine God's light into our darkness. During the Civil War, a Union Army soldier lost his father and brother in battle. He knew his mother could not run the family farm without him. So he decided to see President Lincoln to ask for an exemption from service. When he reached the White House front gate, he was turned away by the guard, who told him that there was no way he could see the president. Discouraged, he sat down on a bench nearby. After a while, a young boy came up to him. Soldier, you look unhappy. What's the matter? The soldier told the boy his story and how he needed to see the president. The little boy said, I can help you. The boy grabbed the soldier's hand and led him to the front gate of the White House. They walked through all the way into the Oval Office where President Lincoln sat working. Good afternoon, Todd. Who is your friend? He said. 
The boy answered, Daddy, this soldier needs to talk to you. The soldier stated his case, and President Lincoln released him from service on the spot. This is what Jesus Christ does for us. This is what Jesus Christ came to do at Christmas. Jesus Christ is like Abraham Lincoln's son, Todd Lincoln. He brings us to the Oval Office up in heaven and introduces us to his Father. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to bring God's light to the world. We do this by introducing our friends and family to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who has come to bring us God's light, who has come to introduce us to his Father in heaven. Ben lives in Ghana. He believes that God has called him to be the light to point others to God's light and Christmas and beyond. He looks at the traffic lights and lighthouses. He looks at traffic lights in Ghana and is reminded of his responsibility to bring to introduce others to Jesus Christ who brings God's light to other people. When I think of signs that keep people safe or offer guidance, I first think of traffic lights, lighthouses and billboards. But we often forget how much more valuable we are as signs that have the potential to show others the hope, joy, and direction God can give to them. In a world where there is so much despair and hopelessness, it is important for us to be living practical signs and beacons of hope. While God is invisible, God has shown us through Jesus Christ how to make God visible. For others, we can be the living signs of God's light of love, drawing people from darkness into the light of life, sharing a loving word, and performing acts of kindness serve as openings to God's kingdom for those who have lost hope. And in this way, we can make the world a bit brighter. Let us now strive to make the world a bit brighter. Amen.